Good morning everyone and welcome back to Craft Eccentricity. Today we're going to make a card and we're going to make a card using the MX Art Steampunk die. Now obviously I've got to cut this apart or maybe not because it's a whole piece and if it will fit onto my sheet of scratch board then I can leave it as a whole piece because I'm going to cut the whole thing. So we're going to use that and this is the scratch board that I'm going to use. It's a copper colour. I did try to find the silver, but it was all sold out, and it usually is. Um, and you can also get it in holographic and a rainbow colour, I think you can get. But I decided to go with the copper because that's the only real metallic one that I liked that they had. So let's open this and I'm going to show you exactly what it looks like. So you get a tiny little sample here, which is really nice of them. A practice piece, it measures probably two inches by an inch. You get a piece of board that you can use if you want to. And this is a scratch board. Now, as you can see, it's got a tiger on it. And you're supposed to use this um, scratch tool that comes with it. I actually keep these because these are great for getting sort of little bits and bobs out that you don't want anywhere. You know, sort of like scratching off glue very gently from surfaces. So I've got lots of these and you do get one in each pack. So once it's cut, once it's been die cut, and I think this will, there you go. It, the whole thing will fit onto there and leave me with a nice chunk up there if I need to cut any extra cogs to make it sort of like more intricate. But once it's cut, you can't see that tiger design at all and you are going to be scratching it off. So I'll pop those two together because I'm going to go and do those. And then I cut the background, which is using die cuts with a view foil these come in a pack of different colors that you can get from tuesday morning and the embossing folder that i've used there is a tim holtz kind of industrial folder i'll try not to blind you with the glare now i didn't over emboss it even though this is 3d because it's a white backed foil card stock and i didn't want it to sort of like crack the foil so it's kind of like gently done through that folder this is going to be the background and I'll show you what I'm going to use with that I'm going to use distress paint in black in antique bronze in broken china and also in walnut stain now I don't know if you're the same as me, but I never have any luck with the dauber top, so I just tip some out. I just shake it up and I tip a bit out. So that's how I use my distress paint. I like it because it's kind of, it's chalky. Um, it's not very glossy when it dries, so I kind of like that, and it dries quite quickly. So that's one of the reasons that I use distress paints. Now, along with the distress paints, I'm also going to be using my... Dollar Tree Jock Glue, which I keep in these little squeezy bottles from AliExpress. They've got a needle tip there, and I really, really like them. It's just enough sort of like material for me to keep in a bottle and to keep it topped up. And then it just reminds me to keep the tip clean as well, because I'll go through it maybe in a week. I'll use one bottle full. We are also going to be using a nail file. These come in a pack of 10 from Dollar Tree. And to cut the die apart, we're going to be using the trusty old snippers here that you get from AliExpress. And uh, these really do work well. But as I can see that my die fits this piece of material, I'm not going to use them. I'm just going to keep the die whole. And we're also going to be using a Dollar Tree paintbrush. There you go. I think they come in a pack of eight for a dollar. And they're just a great size. They're nothing fancy. You know, they're nylon. But they'll squidge and put stuff into areas where you need it. Right, so I am now going to die cut the die from this scratch board. And I will be back. 
Okay, I'm back and I did actually decide to cut the die apart so that um, I could get more cogs out of my piece of material. So what I did was I cut cogs out of the heart instead of leaving the heart solid so that I can have cogs down here and then there was enough material to cut another set so that I can have more cogs on top so that it will look more intricate. And basically that's what I mean, so that I've got like two of each instead of just being able to fit the one of each. And to make up for those spaces and to be able to fill them in, I cut a heart in black so that this will be able to lay on top like that. So I'm just going to move these out of the way for a second because... People have asked about these clippers and how do I cut dies apart. So I'm going to show you how easy it is. Like here you've got three pieces of that watch and I just take the clippers, hold it firmly and twist. That's all you have to do. So I was trying not to hold too firmly in case it twanged into the camera. And then what you have are those little... Um, Let's get a clear picture. Those little sharp pieces now go down as close as you can to the end, squeeze and twist and pop them somewhere safe because if they fly on the floor, you don't really want to tread on them. And then squeeze and twist and then that's gone for you. If you've got any sort of like extra bits, I do use a grinder if there's a bit in an area where I just can't get to it. And I have shown um, that little hand grinder before. You get them from Walmart. They're about $25. But you have to be careful because they work. <laughs> they, they will grind everything away if you're not very gentle with it. Right, so I've got my craft mat. And you've just seen all of those bits and pieces that I cut out there. But first of all, I need to do my background. So I'm going to bring my piece of foil cardstock in again. And you've got a lovely image there of my, my camera. And I'm going to pour out some black. Oh, it does get all dry and crispy around the edges. Can you see that? But I'm going to put just a tiny little drop. That's all I need. I should have checked this bottle first, actually, before doing this. And then I'm going to pick the brush up. My cheap Dollar Tree brush. Shake those crusty bits off. And just go into the areas where you want some black. Now, I don't want to do it over black, if you know what I mean. And once you've got that on there, you just need to go around gently with your scrunched up kitchen paper because that's going to really spread it around for you. And just take that shine off. So I am going to use my fingers in a minute. Because... <laughs> Fit fingers is the best thing when it comes to paint. And I need another drop of that. And I'm going to unscrew it away from my project this time. And I think I'm safe to pour it on here. I'm usually quite cautious. She says globbing it all out. So we have that. And I'm just going to smear it in actually with my kitchen paper. Because what you're after is sort of like industrial grunge and you want to get it into all the bits that matter and then once you've done that let it dry for a couple of minutes and I'll be back when it's done that okay now let's see what we've got so using another piece of kitchen paper here I'm just going to go in and rub it around and dab it up and we are going to put some of the colours onto here so I want this kind of like 
mottled dirty effect but I don't want it too perfect which is why you screwed up kitchen paper is uh, is so important and if my camera is shaking I sincerely apologize but I'm just dabbing that now just to make it look grungy you don't want anything perfect really when it comes to steampunk perfect just doesn't do it now if I pick that up I hope you can see it's all kind of like mottled and that's the joy of your your kitchen paper and the paint is almost dry now so that effect is now permanent unless you've got a few spots there that are still wet so that's what you've got it's really mottled and grungy so I'm going to let that dry for another couple of minutes and I will be back okay so now I'm ready for two more colors and this time I'm going to be using broken china and um, what's this one called antique bronze so what I'm going to do is this is quite liquid so I'm going to put just a little bit of that there because you have to remember copper when it's weathered it has a sort of like verdigris effect and whoop, just a little bit of blue and now I'm going to get my kitchen paper it's still got the black stuff in it I just screwed it around so that I could use the other side and we're going to soften it again over the area where we've got the black but we don't want to lift the black so I'm doing it very very gently but if you can see the difference in effect there so we're kind of like getting rust in our copper and this is going to be our verdigris and the nice thing about um, distress paints the metallic ones and the solid ones is that some of them are actually thicker than others so you can get sort of like different effects now a lot of this blue will be lifted because of course when you've got sort of like aged copper it's not verdigris all over it it's kind of like verdigris in parts I'm just going to get a clean piece of kitchen paper now and dab up even more of that so that you're just going to be left with that sort of like soft powdery verdigris effect on the surface if you can see that if I hold that up to the light and we're just going to take a little bit more of that out just need it to look like it's been outside in the weather for a few years and then you've still got that lovely copper coming through make sure I've got no harsh splashes anywhere I want to lift those and then that's the kind of effect that you're looking for now it's highly reflective on my light and for that I sincerely apologize but a lot of the shine has now gone off that copper foil that we put down and it just looks like a piece of copper that was left outside to go incredibly rusty well copper doesn't go rusty does it no it doesn't it just gets this pattern now. <laughs> I need to learn my ferrous metals you can't be an expert at everything right now I'm happy with that as a background and I'm going to clean my mat and I'll be straight back okay so the background is now complete and I don't know if we're going to get close-ups that's not too bad actually so you've got that dingy verdigris copper and now we're going to move on to the heart so I'll pop this out of the way right so I cut the heart in solid black as you remember because I wanted to uh, be able to double up on my cogs that I cut out and this is all that you have to do just a Dollar Tree nail file 
and it's all about your pressure. So what I do is I put a slight curve there using my finger into the nail file and you're just going to rub. You can rub off as much or as little as you want to. It's entirely up to you. You can use, um, I think this is a slightly finer edge. I'll show that for you. Not much difference when you're scratching around at it, actually. And you can go off the edges there. Let's get a close up so that you can see. You can see it's all scratched up and vintage and shiny. Then you can take even more off. Now, what I will suggest is don't go in there extremely hard because if you do, you'll go into the um, the very back paper, which is white, and uh, you don't want any white showing through. So look at how quick that was. And you've now got a nice steampunky, grungy heart. I'll try and do something about the light actually for when we've finished. I'm going to remove a little bit from here. Don't want to take it all off because I want some of those black bits. So I'm quite happy to have mine like that. Now I'm going to scratch my other pieces and I'll be back. Okay, so I sanded everything down using the nail file and you can see the kinds of details there. Look at these. These are tiny little wings that go off to one side of that clockwork heart. And a little bit of cross hatching so that it's all nice and scratchy and leave some of the black on there. So I've got my heart here. And I haven't glued it down yet, but I'm going to glue it onto its black backing and then I'll just be able to slot those cogs in and then I'll be able to finish it over the top there. So I just take my Dollar Tree glue and squeeze some on, wait for it to run down. There we go. And I absolutely love these bottles. They're just the perfect size for my hands. And I can put it wherever I want to. doesn't matter if any squidges out onto the black because the cock wheels are going in there and it will hide it. So pop that down. Position that. Stick it down. Make sure it's on straight. Yep. And that's it. Dollar Tree glue. Dry. Isn't it wonderful? It's a dollar for an eight ounce bottle. It's the white jot glue. So now that you've seen me stick that down into those apertures there, I'm just going to stick those pieces in that I cut and I will be back. OK, so those have been glued in and because I did it this way, I managed to save some material so that I've got extras that can go on the top to give it even more dimension. So I'm going to give it a little bit of a bend here to make sure that it's lying flat and that's better and we're going to go in and start to stick pieces now I'm going to go with this big cog first and I'm going to pop it pretty much where the other one is I'm, I'm trying to remember the um, image on the website so if I get it completely wrong I'm sorry <laughs> but you know memory is memory and I want them to cross over slightly so I'm going to need to pick this up towards me and spin it slightly there 
so that I feel that I've got more depth going on in there. Can you see that? So I'm popping that one there from memory and then I'm going to go with this piece and I believe it interlocks into there which will be interesting because that means you've got the other one sort of like coming out from it and I think from memory that one goes about there so that one is offset from that one and that gives it even more dimension put it up there so that it looks like it would be turning in that wheel and then I've got little pieces here that should go on top so what I'm going to do is I'm going to carry on gluing and I will be back so here it is all glued and you can see just how detailed that is and looks more intricate because we cut the cogs into the heart so it looks like a double layer when really that second layer um, was no effort at all because we were just slotting it back in to the apertures in that heart there and mounting it on black cardstock. But there's our steampunk necklace and I'm now going to mount it onto that base that I just did and some black cardstock and I will be back. So here is the finished card mounted onto that base that was painted. I do apologise for the glare but it does look like weathered copper I promise you and I will try to get a better photograph of it but the beauty of scratchboard is you can create great effects really really quickly and if you don't mind paying 97 cents for a sheet of something to use on something then really it, it's not that expensive I mean I'm sure that you could find them in multi-packs on sites like Blix or something like that and get them a lot cheaper but whenever I'm in Walmart I just pop a couple into my basket and I've got a little supply of them so it doesn't really worry me too much but let's see if we can get a close-up there you go so you've got all that lovely mat and you can't see that there was ever a tiger printed on that because if I can grab the packet that's what it looked like it had that tiger print on it but you can't see any tiger at all in there all you can see is that you've scratched it back and you've achieved a great effect so thank you very much for joining me today I hope I didn't do anything that confused anyone because I know I have a tendency to you know burble on or go quiet or maybe not mention things that I'm supposed to mention because I kind of like just get lost in what I'm doing so this is the MX Art Steampunk Heart the background is a Tim Holtz 3D embossing folder the scratch board is from Walmart and you have a fabulous day as usual all links below bye